And some people seek revenge by adding to a story, you know. And then nobody else jumps up. You take that person to court, you lose a settlement for the sake of, and it goes away. When 10 people raise their fucking hands, you know, the Houston quarterback, that guy. Oh, Jesus Christ. Wasn't that 200 or something? Yeah. Like, you know, but again, at that point, I think there was 50 of those women. He just told them that their titties were nice and they just <laughs> wanted to cash out. You know, when if you find out somebody's giving out cash, you're going over there, aren't you? Right. If I think there's a broken ATM machine in fucking Southie that's spitting out 50s. You're going to sit at home like a fucking faggot? No, you're going to run down there and figure out why is this thing spitting the fucking 50s out? And how can I, if I get 150 out of there, I'll make my day. Right. So, you know, you got to be careful. I'm sure any day now an LA one's going to break with an athlete or something. It's got to. They said those parties, you have to sign like fucking things to go into them and you know i don't want to go to any party where i gotta sign something did you ever they're like for like all the hollywood parties yeah did you see, did you see cray i never went to one of those did you get like see cray you see you never one? went to one i mean i never saw you recently but like you never went when you were younger not my style and i got invited to some wild shit and i would think about it and then go to the comedy store do a set got a half a gram and go Get a gram of coke and go, what do I want to do over there for? I'm doing what I'm going to do over there over here by myself. I don't have to lie to nobody and make believe I'm anybody. So I never went. One of the craziest ones I haven't got invited to. I never spoke about this. Was uh, a Bobby Brown, Whitney Houston one. Oh, you got invited to one? Yeah, at A&M Records on La Brea. Remember where that was? Okay. There, they were having, they were taping something. And then they were going to tape over the studio. And when the guy called me, I was very happy at 5 o'clock. But by 10 o'clock, I just had a weird feeling. And I go, you know what? I like snorting coke, but I don't want to be in a church where everybody's snorting coke. Why? Because it's a fucking, it's like the walking dead. When you're in a room with 40 people and 38 of them are high on coke, it's, it's not a good feeling. It's fucking surreal. And if you close your eyes and just listen to the room, You'll go, I got to get the fuck out of here. These people are crazy. Holy shit. Okay. Let so you as, but let me do as much as that Coke as I can before I leave. So I don't have to do any of mine. And no, so I, what, I, what I, made you decide not to go? That night. That night. It just what? Listen, man. It's so funny how there's people who mix in that scene and there's people who don't. And you got to know you don't mix in that. I don't do well in that scenario. Unless I can rob a purse or a ten thousand dollar watch, I don't do good in those fucking parties. Okay, if I'm gonna listen to that fucking ear beating all night, I gotta get some of my. And at that time, I, my head wasn't even there. I was a junkie. I wasn't a hey, whatever you call that, a uh, hobbyist. You know, I was set in my ways when I got high. I, I like a naked woman. Everybody does, but those naked women, they talk too much. They complain too much. They want to smoke a cigarette. Their girlfriend texts them. They got to hit them back. Now they want to, they're naked. They're like, can my girlfriend come over? No, not really. (laughs) I got to listen to you two birds. I just want to shoot one more load and go to sleep and finish this fucking coke. So I got pretty accustomed at the end to just be by myself. Right. I didn't want to put up through with all that stuff. When I quit coke those seven years, eight years before that, I wasn't getting high with people. Wow. And was it what was the worst part about getting high with someone? What I just told you. The but, but like the whole the chit chat was and too much. Yeah, now hold on, my mother's on the phone. You what? It's four in the morning. Why are you talking to your fucking mother? <laughs> you know, it was just too much for me after a while. The stories, you know, the people crying. Well, people really have to come. Like I was somewhere a couple weeks ago, and my wife came over to me and she goes. I can tell you don't want to be here. I go, are you fucking crazy? Listen to what these fucking jamokes are talking about. You know? And 
I put my two cents in the conversation, and then we we left anyway. And I remember I was in the car by myself. We drove separate. And me thinking, one of these people going to understand that for 40 years, all I gave a fuck about was getting high and getting my dick sucked. I never even listened to this chitter chatter these fucking idiots talked about. I, I don't even know what they were talking about half the time. I didn't want to hear it. So what would you do? How do you avoid that chit chat? You put a cock in their mouth. I don't fucking know. <laughs> you know, I don't know. You just say fucking. I'm not doing this tonight with a bunch of people. And trust right. me. I had a lot of fun partying with a lot of people. But as your addiction grows, your paranoia grows, your insecurities grow, everything grows. You know, if you stop doing, if I stopped doing Coke 17 years ago, if I go back tomorrow, my addiction is going to be worse than what it was when I let it go. Because just because so. I know so, just because you stop doing a drug doesn't mean your addiction doesn't grow. And then there's transfers, there's always transfers, you know, the edibles. The Xanax, there's transfers. Right. And you got to catch yourself. That's why it was interesting you spoke about gambling tonight. Mm -hmm. Because I love DraftKings because I understood how easy it is to fall. That's why when I recommended it, I told people all the time, I just bet 25 bucks. That's a big bet. And when you go on DraftKings, you see that if you bet $10, you still win 67 bucks. Right? You ever put like a team in? Yeah. And it says 10 gets you 67 bucks if you put a parlay in for 10 bucks you're still gonna win 60 bucks or something it's not that bad right and it's It's not it's just entertainment right don't come to me when you're a 40 year old grown man and go joey you fucked me up i lost twenty two thousand on DraftKings. how how because they monitor you they don't let you use a credit card no they don't let you use PayPal unless it's yours. They don't let you. They don't give you access to a lot of shit. I, I like the limits that you can put on yourself, and it's like you know, it's a, you and I both struggle with weight. It's the same thing. McDonald's is out there, but you don't have to eat it every meal. Like, and it's it's at a certain point you have to take responsibility. 